In this video, we are going to look at the uh, science paper for the year 2015, which is chemistry. So let's look at uh, the first question. Uh, the basic uh, units of matter are ions, so we have ions, we have ions, molecules, and atoms. Identify the basic units in each of the following substances. So if we look at uh, the first substance here, we have magnesium, and we know that magnesium is a metal. Then chloride, which is chlorine, this is a non-metal. And we know that whenever we have a compound that consists of a metal and a non-metal, we have what we call ionic compound. Now, in an ionic compound, we have ions. So we have positive ions and the negative ions. So the answer for this one, we have ions. So the ions are in magnesium chloride. Then if we look at lead, a lead is just see, uh, a metal. And we know that a metal consists of uh, the atoms. So here we have uh, the atoms uh, as our basic units uh, that are found in lead. Then we have the carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide is a molecule. So here we is a molecule because it is a covalent compound. So here the answer is we have molecules. Okay, now let's move on to question two. Question two. The purity of a substance such as that of drugs is very important because very small amount of impurities in such substances may cause serious illness or death. Then question A. State any two physical properties that can be that can enable a chemist to identify a substance and test its purity. So the first one we can use the uh, the boiling point. So the boiling point of a substance can be used to determine if the substance is pure or impure. The second one melting point. Under boiling point, the boiling point of a an impure substance is greater than a pure substance. Then for an impure, most of the melting point for an impure is less than that of a normal. So these are the two uh, properties that can be used to determine the purity of a substance. Okay, now let's move on to question B. Question B here. The graphs below shows the melting points of drugs A and B. So we have two drugs. Then in drug A, if we look at the graph here, we can see we have straight lines. So whenever we have straight lines, the interpretation that we can make from here is here we can see that it's like we have a definite. Uh, if it's boiling point or uh, not in point, it's definite, it's not changing. But for drug B, we can see that the line is not flat, so it's not uh, straight. So here we can see that this line is giving us the picture that if it's a boiling or melting point, or since we are looking at melting point, if this is for a melting point, we can see that this one is not obeying the actual heating curve. So now let's look at Roman number one. Which of the drugs is pure? So which of the, the drugs is pure? So we have drug A will be pure. Why? By looking at the graph, we can see that this graph is obeying the heating curve. So we can say the, the graph has straight lines, straight lines, and it is obeying obeying the heating curve and uh, for a heating curve the line must be straight so drug A is pure now let's move on to question 3 so question 3 zinc was added to aqueous copper 2 sulfate question A describe what would be observed in the above reaction so now the question that we are supposed to ask ourselves here is is zinc reactive is zinc more reactive than copper 
If yes, then we are expecting to have a reaction. But if zinc is less reactive than copper, then the reaction will not take place. Now, according to the reactivity series, zinc is more reactive than copper. So this zinc will displace copper, giving us zinc sulfate plus copper. Then we want to describe what will be observed. So now the zinc sulfate is colorless. So a colorless uh, solution eh, will be formed. And the other thing that we need to know is eh, the reaction between zinc and copper 2 sulfate is exothermic. Now exothermic reaction eh, is the reaction where heat is given eh, out. So if heat is given out, then eh, the, the temperature of the beaker will rise. So the, the, the point is... Eh, as if someone is holding the beaker where this reaction is taking place, the person will feel the rise in temperature. So that is an indication that that is also another uh, observation. So say the reaction will take place. The reaction. The reaction. The reaction will take place. will take place and there will be there will be a rise a rise in temperature a rise in temperature indicating that heat is given out Okay, so this is what we can see here. So that is an observation. Then let's look at for the other question. 13 grams of zinc completely reacted with copper to sulfate solution. Then Roman number one, uh, construct a chemical equation for this reaction. So the word equation is this one. So we have zinc plus copper. To sulfate so whenever we are given these two it means the valence that we are using is two so copper to sulfate this will give us it. so the zinc will displace copper giving us zinc sulfate plus C copper so now let's look at the chemical equation so the chemical equation here zinc is uh, Zn plus C, copper to sulfate. So the chemical formula for copper is Cu. Then sulfate, it is SO4. So copper has a valence of 2. Sulfate has also a valence of 2. So these two numbers will cancel. So this is our chemical formula for copper to sulfate, which is in aqueous. Then we know that zinc has a valence of 2. So this will give us the same. So zinc sulfate also equals plus C copper which is now a solid now for this reaction where each individual ion present has uh, has a valence of two so zinc has a valence of two copper has a valence of two uh, sulfate is a radical with a valence of two so whenever we have such kind of a reaction uh, reaction the uh, chemical equation is already balanced. So we can see that T is already balanced. Now we can now move on to uh, question E. Question E. Uh, Roman number two. Calculate the mass of copper produced. So we we'll look at uh, zinc. Why? Zinc, the mass of zinc is given. Then uh, our question is uh, we want the mass of what? Uh, copper. So what is the, the, the mass number for zinc? So since we only have since we only have a pure element, it's not a compound. So we are not going to find the, the mister. So according to my uh, periodic table here, uh, zinc, zinc has a mass number of 65. 
Then if we go to copper, copper has a mass number of 64. So that is our first step that we need to do. Then the second one, let's look at the mass that we are given. 13 grams was for zinc. So this 13 grams will be written here where zinc is. Then here we'll put x, then cross multiply. Then 65 times x, we have 65x is equal to then 13 times 64. I'm getting 832 over 65 also over 65 so if we cancel x is equal to so 832 divided by so we have 832 divided by uh, 65 so I'm getting 12.80 grams so this was now the mass for copper so that is the key point here now let's move on to question 4 so question 4 the grid below represents a part of the periodic table the numbers shown represent the atomic numbers of elements so the atomic number is just the total number of our protons found in an atom in an atom of a given element so here let's look at uh, the first uh, column so this uh, column here this is our group one then uh, this is our group two why if we we write the configuration for this will give us uh, two comma two then uh, group three uh, group four five six 70 then we have our group 80 here now let's look at the questions from the grid above select the atomic number of an element which the first one is a noble gas used to fill a balloon so what noble gas is used to fill balloon so this is no other than helium so one of the importance of uh, helium is to fill up the balloons then what is the atomic number for balloon is just see i mean for helium is two then we go to b is the most reactive metal so the most reactive elements or metals are coming from group one now according to the trend in group one we say the reactivity series increases as we go down the group so 11 here this is more reactive than 3 and 1 why because it is below than the above two elements so here we are supposed to have uh, 11 so key point when, when you look at group uh, one elements the most reactive element is the one below so let's move on to uh, question c is the most reactive non-metal so the most uh, reactive non-metals are those in group 7. now uh, the trend in group 7 is opposite to that of group 1 for this one the trend the reactivity series increases as you go up so the 9 here is more reactive than 17 so we put our 9 here then d forms an ion of the type x2 minus an ion is a charged particle so a two minus here we are saying for this to be stable it needs to gain two more electrons so that's what the, the negative rule shows so the elements that behaves like this are those from group six so from group six we have we can say eight and sixteen these two behaves the same but we just get eight then we we'll move on to uh, E, forms an amphoteric oxide. Now, what is an amphoteric oxide? An amphoteric oxide is a type of oxide that behaves as a base or an acid, depends on what it is reacting with. So, from this, the examples of uh, amphoteric oxide is aluminium. So, aluminium has the mass i mean atomic number of 13 
So this is our answer here. Then we move on to F forms a hydroxide that dissolves in water. So hydroxide of all group 1 elements dissolves in water. So we can get 1 or 3 or 11. All these are answers. So let's just get 1. Okay, so now let's move on to question uh, 5 here. So question 5 here. Uh, brass is an alloy of metals. Then question A. Define the term alloy. So an alloy is just a substance. Eh? That consists of, sometimes you may uh, combine two or more metals. Sometimes you may combine a metal and a non-metal. Sometimes non-metals. So the key point is an alloy is just a combination of two or more uh, metals. So we can say this is a substance. This is a substance with two or more metals, metals stroke, non metals combined together, combined together. So, in terms of whenever we are looking at definitions or maybe questions where you are supposed to explain or describe. These are uh, answers you can uh, describe or define it in your own way. I'm not saying you should just stick to this now. The key point is as long as you know the key words from the given definition, then we are good uh, way to go. So here the key point is we are looking at a substance that or a combination of two or more metals. Okay, then let's look at question B. Name the two metals which make up brass. So each or any alloy has the metals that makes it as an alloy. So we want to determine or find out the, the metals that make up brass or that are found in brass. So in brass we have copper. So we have copper. Then the second one we have zinc. Then for... Question E, C here, uh, give any two reasons why the use of alloys is preferred to that of pure metals. So why is it, uh, is it an advantage of using an alloy compared to, let's say, using of copper or zinc? So the first one, most alloys are corrosion resistance. This means that they do not corrode, corrode or it is hard for these alloys to have uh, rusting so we can say they are they are corrosion corrosion resistant then the second one uh, also they are stronger they are stronger they are stronger than they are individual elements. Then we can now move on to question six. Name any two water pollutants. So a pollutant is any substance that can can uh, pollute the environment. So in our case, we are looking at. Uh, Pollutancy that we think can uh, pollute water. So the first one, no? there are so many. We can say domestic uh, wastes. We are looking at uh, the waste that comes uh, from the houses or from the environment. Then uh, away from there also insecticide. Pesticides, then there are so many. Then for B, state the effects of the following air pollutants on the environment. So the first one, sulfur dioxide. So what is the effect of sulfur dioxide? So if sulfur dioxide dissolves in water, acidic rain will be produced. So we'll say it produces 
it produces acidic rain if it dissolves if it dissolves in water vapor water vapor and acidic rain is a very uh, negative impact on the environment because most of our uh, uh, living organisms like uh, plants will start to die out and we know that without plants life is impossible on earth since uh, the plants are producers uh, according to ecology then uh, carbon monoxide so carbon monoxide this one it causes climate change so it causes climate change which results in a global warming then also the other negative of carbon monoxide especially to human beings if too much of this is inhaled the person may likely to suffocate or maybe to experience dizziness. Then for carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide is similar to carbon monoxide. This also it causes it causes climate change. Climate change, which is the, the one of which uh, climate change, which results like in a increase in high temperature. Then also sometimes. It, it may result in a disturbing of a rain pattern. So let's look at now question seven. So under question seven here, we are looking at the structures below represents various organic compounds. So the first one, compound A, we can see that between we only have uh, C. If we are to write the the chemical formula so we have two carbons then you have one two three four five six so six so this is an alkane an alkane why because there is only a single bond here and the name of this alkane will be ethane where we have a and e then let's look at for b so B, we can see that this is an alkene. Why? Because there is a double bond here. And the name of this one is ethene. The ethene, E N E is a suffix, but E T H F means there are two carbons. We can see we have two carbons here. Then for for the uh, this C, this is also an alkene, but because there is a, uh, an atom of chlorine, we we'll call this one as chloroethene. So it's ethene because of the double bond here. Now let's look at D. For D, we can see we have OH. Whenever you see OH, these are alcohols. Then the name of this alcohol is ethanol. Then for D, we can still have this functional group, COOH. So whenever you have COOH, this is a carboxylic acid. Now, carboxylic acids, this will be ethanoic acid. Okay, now let's look at the questions. So the questions, we have the first one. Name the polymer produced when structure B is polymerized. So what is structure B? So structure B is a thin. So whenever you are trying to name a polymer, first you begin by the first uh, word, which is poly. Then you add the monomer. So in our case, B is the monomer, which is a thin. So we have poly a thin. So that's how you name. Then for C. C we said is the chloroethene. So this will be poly chloroethene. So that's how you name a uh, po polymer. So you first add the prefix poly, then plus the monomer. Now 
explain question b explain why the burning of compound a in a limited supply of air is dangerous so uh, compound a is ethane which is an alkane so what is the impact of uh, burning of an alkane in limited in limited we are saying like here insufficient there is no enough oxygen so if there is no enough oxygen this will result in a, an incomplete combustion so it will result it will result in an incomplete incomplete combustion so what is the negative of this incomplete combustion carbon monoxide will be produced carbon monoxide will be produced and we've looked at the negative impact of carbon monoxide of which we are going to have the climate change now let's go to question e, d so question d a reaction between e, d and e so let's first identify d and e we said d is ethanol e is ethanoic so d we have ethanol here which is an alcohol then e we have ethanoic acid carboxylic acids okay and in the presence of a catalyst produce an organic compound and water so name the organic compound produced so here whenever you react an alcohol with an acid ester and ester and water are produced and we call that uh, process as esterification so how do we name the esters so first you begin with the uh, alcohol so since our alcohol that was used was the uh, ethanol so the key point is you get the eth so you just get the prefix which is eth you write eth then after you write eth you add yl so this becomes the ethyl so that is the pattern so whenever you are naming an ester first you begin by uh, getting the prefix from the alcohol then you add the suffix of yl so if it is pro propyl but butyl so that is the pattern then from there you go to ethanoic so ethanoic you get uh, this will be you get eth then you add any then he or et so we have ethyl ethanoate name the catalyst used so the catalyst used in the formation of ethyl ethanoate is concentrated sulfuric acid okay so now let's move on to question question eight the chemical equation below represents a redox reaction so redox we are looking at uh, reduction and oxidation so let's look at uh, here we have uh, methane react with uh, two atoms of chlorine giving us uh, chloromethane plus hydrogen chloride as a gas now this is what we call a substitution reaction a proper so substitution reaction where one atom of hydrogen is being substituted by one atom of chlorine we can see from this uh, structure here then the first one define the term oxidation in terms of hydrogen so oxidation can be defined in terms of the first one if we look at the electrons if we look at electrons or oxidation is the loss of electrons loss of electrons then if we look at the uh, oxygen uh, oxidation is the addition of oxygen so addition of oxygen then if we look at hydrogen is the subtraction or it is when a, uh, a substance has a, has a release the or uh, we are looking at the loss so let's just say loss of hydrogen loss of hydrogen so these are the definition of uh, oxidation so the opposite of this is the uh, definitions for re reduction 
So like here, reduction can be gain of electron, uh, loss of uh, oxygen, gain of hydrogen. So here we'll say oxidation, oxidation. So here the reason why they said in terms of hydrogen, they were there are some uh, there are three definitions, but they wanted to like specify. So oxidation will say is the loss of hydrogen. Then B in the above chemical equation, set the substance that is the first one, Roman number one, oxidize. So oh, we are saying oxidation is a loss. So the one that has uh, loss is the one that has been oxidized. So which is the methane. So we have methane here, this one, because it lost this. Then we can see that on the reactant side, we only have one molecule of chlorine. Then here we have hydrogen. So chlorine gained. So as it gained hydrogen, it was reduced. So it was reduced. Then is the reducing agent. So the key point here is the substance that is oxidized is a reducing agent in the process. So we still have methane. Why is this a reducing agent? We are saying chlorine was reduced. Why? It gained an atom of hydrogen. So now what made chlorine to gain? It's because of the presence of what? Methane. So methane is a reducing agent. Then for question A, now see, give two other examples of reducing agents. So reducing agents, there are so many, we'll say carbon monoxide. So carbon monoxide, like in the extraction of iron. We know that during the extraction of iron, we use carbon monoxide as the reducing agent. Then the other one, carbon in the extraction of zinc so in the extraction of zinc okay now let's go to question nine here question nine start the formation the information about w x y and z so w has a constant composition and decomposes into into two elements so this should be a compound compounds that decompose into two elements like if we have calcium carbonate if this is heated will give us a calcium oxide plus a carbon dioxide then uh, x is colored gray and attracted to a magnet it cannot be decomposed into anything simple so this can be just a metal because it cannot decompose into anything simple then why is colored black and white the white particles dissolves in water but the black particles do not so this can be a mixture where one 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 is soluble the other one is insoluble z is black full stop it is formed by strongly heating copper in the oxygen so if we get copper plus oxygen we have copper oxide then copper oxide is also a compound is it a compound so let's look at the questions now so identify the solids above why by placing a tick in the table uh, below so let's look at w w is a compound so tick from here then uh, x x we say is a metal so a metal we can just say an element here y we said mixture here copper oxide is a compound here then the last question define an element so an element an element is a pure is a pure substance with one kind of 
atom. So under element, we only have one type of atom. So this is how we can answer uh, this question. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.